Hey y'all, welcome to Stavers Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And this is Ray Ray and Wyatt. And there's Ray Ray's top of her head. So before we go any further in this video, disclosure, this is a turkey processing video. We will not be showing any of the graphic details of the actual thing, um, but we will show the process of how to process and harvest a turkey. Um, because I know if you're anything like us, it does help seeing it um, before doing it, even though you truly don't learn until you actually get your hands on it. Um, we do raise animals for meat for our family. Uh, poultry. Yeah, poultry. Yeah. Um, we are very respectful with our animals. Uh, they are born here, well, not born here, Sometimes I guess. born here. Sometimes born here. <laughs> um, but raised here and live a very good life just like any other animal we have on our farm. Um, this food is for our pantry, for our bellies, and to know that we're eating completely healthy, non-medicated, non-GMO meat. Yep. And so that's why we choose to do this life. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through the setup. Um, we will show you uh, how to process one turkey. Um, there, we have six of them, so we won't show you every single one that we do. Um, but we'll walk you through that, and then we'll show you what we're going to do with it on the end, too, because we're not just putting them in a bag and sticking them in the freezer. Yeah. Well, we're going to do something better. Better yeah. on the end. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Especially yeah. at the end. Yeah. We're going to celebrate Easter. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's show you what we got. All right. Okay. The first initial setup. We have our kill cone here. And kind of how I like to do it is I got my picnic table that we're sitting here. I'll pull the bird down, pull the neck out a little bit. And right here is just easy for me to be able to do that. For comparison size, this is a chicken cone. Yeah, we, if you, and you can see out that video, um, go check it out after this. That's right. That would be good for you to check out after this. We'll put it at the end screen. Very good point, because we do have a video on how to process meat chickens. So you can see the size comparison. You definitely need a bigger cone and what the, it's called a kill cone, and I know that sounds vicious. Um, but the reasoning for this, when poultry, really of any kind, is upside down, it puts them in a calm state. They're, they're not passed out, but they're relaxed. And so they, they won't fight. And so when you pull it out here, it's a very humane, yeah. as humane as you can get kind of process to do that. So yeah, so the first thing you need is a setup on how you're going to do the killing. There's a million different ways you can do it. Um, but this is the one that we choose. We feel like it's the most respectful and humane way to do it. Okay, next station, which is right beside that station, is your water, your heat water. And so I was just checking my temperature. We're up to 100 degrees. Um, what this is, is actually a turkey deep fryer that we use every Thanksgiving, but it's being repurposed this round. Um, but you want your temp, and I promise you, you're going to hear a few different ones, but the range is going to be 140 to 150. You're gonna be one somewhere in the middle there, so you kinda of gotta play around with it. And what this does is it loosens the feathers so they're much easier to come out. Um, what we try to shoot for is 145. Um, you'll tell, if you go too high, that skin will just peel off. Now, only one of ours is gonna... Tree. <laughs> Tree's just a tree, not a bee. <laughs> um, we are actually, like I said at the end, we're not putting them all in bags, so we're okay if some of the skin tears. Um, but one of them we're going to keep for Thanksgiving, so one has to be perfect. But that's the difference in temp. If it's too low... Chicken temperature is different. Yes. This is for turkey. Yes, exactly. What, I, I can't remember which one. Watch the other video, we tell you in that one. Um, but if it's too low, the feathers won't come out. If it's too high, all the skin will rip off. And then you got to find that sweet spot. So we're going to shoot for 145. And now for our most excited part, the yard bird plucker. <laughs> um, the, if you, when you watch our chicken video, you'll see we did not have this bad boy. We used a hand drill uh, that had a like an attachment for a plucker. That does not work whatsoever. We had to end up hand plucking everything, and it took it forever. So we're using this this time. It's the first time using it. It's supposed to be able to handle turkeys. Um, what I think we'll have to do is cut the feet off first before we put it in there, uh, just because their feet are so big, they'll get caught up in here. Um, but we're excited about it. We're excited to try it. Um, we know a lot of you all um, are curious on to see how it works. So that's step number three. I almost forgot to mention, we do have an ice bath as well. That goes before the chicken plugger. So you go hot water dip, cold water dip to shock the skin, to bring it back tight, and then you do the chicken plugger. All right, next step is our sanitized tables. This is where the processing actually starts. And so you're gonna wanna have a spray bottle which we have down there that's diluted with uh, bleach and water. Um, because after you do them, you wanna spray it off, clean it off, and just make sure you're just constantly sterilizing 
uh, your tables when you clean. But this is where we'll do the innards out and then we'll actually have them ready and completed for the last step. Coolers full of ice. So you need to let your turkeys, after you get done with this, no matter what you're doing with them, they need to rest. Anytime you do any kind of processing of an animal, the meat needs to rest before you're either butchering uh, to like cut it up into quarters or before you put it in the freezer. That just allows it to help um, with the tenderness and the meat flavor and all that stuff just stay compact. So you're gonna put them in the coolers and you're just gonna let them sit overnight and then that's when we'll do the next step. But that's the process. It's not a crazy setup, but it's a lot. So now it's basically time to get this bad boy going. All right, we are on number three. So, turkey's a little different than chickens. Uh, like I always say, you can watch all the videos that you possibly want to watch, uh, but you don't truly really know how to do it until you do it yourself kind of thing. So, you're gonna see blood. There's no killing. That's already been done, but you will see blood. So if you're squimish, please fast forward a couple minutes. So. Kill cone. We have one of our females in here. They barely fit. Um, they're very big, and this is the biggest kill cone I could possibly find. Um, and they barely fit, but it does work. The toms do not fit whatsoever. We actually had to do that a little differently. Um, it was still fine and humane, but we'll save the details. But she's in there. We did it. Uh, you get the bucket down, let all the blood drain out, um, and then I'll show you the next stop. But where Jen is, um, is actually skinning them. So she is currently in process of skinning one of the toms, which is huge. And uh, these uh, white broad breasted meat birds are what we have or what we got. Um, we got it from Hoover's Hatchery. Um, they, I think we went a couple weeks too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they're very fatty. Um, and the meat itself isn't, but this I mean, on them. Okay, look at the breast. Oh yeah, the breasts are beautiful but it's just underneath their skin, a lot of fat underneath there. So it's a little bit more to work through it and everything. But you see feathers on there, right? So they're too heavy almost for the plucker. Um, they won't bounce around like you would expect them to. Um, so we're having to hold their feet and I'm about to show you all this stuff too, but I wanted to explain it. Um, you have to kind of hold their feet and bounce them up and down and get some of the feathers off. Well, we're skinning them anyway, so we're not overly worried about uh, having the feathers on when we start doing this process. We just want to get most of them off so we can see what we're doing and not just have a big bunch of feathers. Uh, but it works, just not great. Uh, so if you're wanting to have a whole turkey, I wouldn't say that this is going to do the job. You're definitely going to have to have some hand plugging, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Jen's feeling great right now. Right in the thick of it, so. <laughs> worth it later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jen, we ready to do this thing? Uh, the water hunting. Yeah. Much better. Much better. <laughs> Good idea. Good. Cooler people. Good. Good idea. Okay. Coming at you. I got a couple of legs left first. You ready? So, as you can see, it definitely does not get all the bird, all the feathers off. But, like I said, that's okay because we're skinning them anyways. Um, 
the the females do good. I mean, they they bounce around in there as I just showed you all. Um, so I think you could get them. We need to work on our water a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit hotter temperature. But that cooler is a great way to do it. You boil your water and put it in the cooler because these guys don't like to fit in a turkey deep fryer um, because they're bigger than say the turkeys you would get at the store. Um, but we're getting there, we're working it. Like I said, we've done one complete. This one's almost done. This is number three and we've got three more to go. We did it, babe. We did. So uh, Blood Feather did get a pardon. A um, couple reasons. One, we are pretty exhausted. Yep. Two, several battle wounds. Yep, injured. Yeah. So turkeys, I don't know if you've ever seen their feet, but they have like talons. It's, it's literally like an eagle. And so they're vicious sometimes when you just try to grab them or just anything. So had a couple of battle wounds. Um, one thing right now that I can tell any of you all think about doing turkeys, her and I could not have done that by ourselves yeah, at all. Too heavy. Yeah, they're just way too heavy. Uh, we couldn't have done it without Jed. Jed was a super huge help. Um, and we're extremely grateful for him for that. Um, but yeah, Blood Feather did get a pardon. I know we said that they need to be done, but we're gonna. Yeah, check she's it out. also got eggs, so we might hatch some, maybe sell some. Definitely not going to process anymore. Yeah, yeah, that was a <laughs> lot. I mean, we're not kidding. It whooped our butt. Yeah. Um, and it's something that uh, it was our first time ever doing it with turkeys. We've done chickens, but don't even compare the two. They were two. Just so big that it was almost dangerous. Yeah, they're they're that big. It's almost like you were doing like a goat or a deer or something. Cause I mean, they just, they weighed so much and just holding things and doing stuff like that. It's difficult. Anyways, this isn't over though. I think we're going to add the canning in um, because we wanted to show you all how we fully, what we fully are doing with them. So this was the processing part. We had to clean it up. Hopefully you learned something. We are not trying to shy you away from doing turkeys. It's just a lot. Yeah. They're just a very big, heavy animal. Um, so it would uh, maybe a little bit of machinery yeah. or something would have been nice. The plucker did its thing, um, but ours were just way too heavy. I think it'll be perfect for the chickens. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great for the chickens. Those little things just bounce around in there. That's a little vulgar and <laughs> it's been a long day. Y'all got blood all over. <laughs> okay, we're gonna clean up. We'll see y'all here in just a second when we start canning. Yep. Good morning. We're rested. We've cleaned up. Our battle wounds are healing, uh, and today is the big day of canning. Yeah. So we have skinless turkeys right there. Uh, so we did all that, yeah, big turkeys. We did all that yesterday, skinning them out, just kind of saving that step. So now we can just straight start butchering, butcher the breast, uh, the legs, the thighs, the wings, all that good stuff, and get all the meat off because we are grounding every ounce every of it. Every ounce of it. So if you've kept, caught, and caught any of our earlier videos, you know we eat a lot of ground turkey mm -hmm. instead of ground beef. It's better for our guts, makes us feel better, the kids like it better, so it's just what we do. And if you've never had turkey spaghetti or turkey tacos, yeah. ground, ground now, not, not like filleted and slices yeah. or anything, you're missing out. You really are, it's good, we love ground turkey. So we knew when we got these turkeys, this is what we were gonna do with them. Um, we already have whole turkeys from previous Thanksgiving and get togethers frozen in our freezer. So we're not interested in freezing any of this. We're gonna grind every ounce of it up and we're gonna uh, can it in the pressure canner. And then we can go into our pantry and get our ground turkey anytime we want to. We'll see how much it makes, but I have a feeling it's gonna be enough for at least a year. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll oh, see. Because the one thing you gotta remember, there's only two spots that don't have a big bunch of bones in them, right? That's the breast. So the breast are the only boneless part of this. So the rest we're gonna have to cut off bones. Yeah. So that is gonna limit a little bit of the meat when you look at the size of the turkey. <laughs> um, but the breasts are huge in general. So yeah. we gotta quit yammering. We gotta get going. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to weigh each one, just see our full weight. Uh, this was definitely a tom. Um, you can considerably see the difference between the toms and the, the females. So let's see what we got here. Well, maybe this was a female. 27 pounds. 27 pounds. So with all the feathers and the neck, all the parts, it was probably what? 35. 35 pounds. I mean, their necks are, we'll show you in a minute, they're yeah. huge. So that's probably five, 10 pounds on yeah. its own. That's not bad. it's just the, the ice where it's melted. Oh. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is take off the breast. I'll show you those. Uh, just picture Thanksgiving when you're doing this. 
Um, you have your rib or your uh, rib cage that starts right down here, and then this fillets out. So you just want to take your cut real close there and cut down. Cut down. And so here's one thing to remember: you're not making perfect, beautiful cuts here. It's all going up in a meat grinder. But you want to get as much off as first uh, without having to get into the bone. So then once you get your get it out, you just kind of skin it. So like you kind of put a little tension and then you just kind of work back and forth. You don't have to sit here and dig and try to dig down because it'll just come right off for you. And I think you should definitely cook this when it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> when it's Thanksgiving? It's actually Easter today. Yeah, but we did Easter last night. Yeah, because it's going to rain today, isn't it? Yeah. We got long time in bed. And see, right here is where you get into the drumstick. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, that's the wing. The start of the wing. So you can kind of cut just around that. Because like, there's a joint right there. Smells like cranberry juice. <laughs> smells like cranberry juice? Do you even eat cranberry juice? No, but I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that breast. That's a big chunk. It is huge. So we're just going to keep doing all this. I got to cut them all up and we're going to have to put them into chunks to get into the meat grinder. And then we will show you that part. Okay, next step is the meat grinder. So while he's cutting and carving, I'm gonna be taking the pots and bringing them over here and putting the meat into here. And it's gonna grind it up into these bowls and then we'll do the next step. This is our first time with this meat grinder, but I think it's gonna do awesome and we'll let you know how it does. Okay, we've got meat. It was like maybe a breast, one breast probably, um, filled up that whole bowl. So I think we've greatly underestimated the time and resources that this is gonna take. But I've got that all in a bowl and it's sitting in ice just to keep it chilled. I've got my canner boiling my jars. We're gonna start with pints and then move to quarts when we run out. I've got a pot of water back there because I'm gonna cover my browned turkey with boiling water. We're doing a hot pack. So this is, if I had to guess, probably two pounds, maybe two and a quarter. And I'm lightly browning it. I'm not gonna cook it all the way through. It's just gonna be about two thirds cooked. And then we're gonna pack it into the hot jars and we're gonna pour the boiling water over top, leaving a one inch headspace. Okay, so the first turkey has been completely butchered. And so what I've done is this is all the legs and wings and thighs, all the stuff that we've gotten all the meat off of, which of course we left some because you got like a bunch of tendons up in there and little hair bone kind of stuff that you just don't want to get in your ground meat. So I left a little bit on it. However, nothing goes to waste here at our place. So all of this stuff is going to make amazing turkey broth for Jen. Now, of course, we're not going to tackle that today because we got a lot of meat to can. So what we're doing is we're getting these in freezer zip ziploc bags um, we'll throw them in our deep freeze and then uh, she can use these whenever she wants to make some broth we're also going to do it for the carcass itself because what are you going to do with this ginormous carcass right uh i guess you could probably feed it to your dogs but <laughs> what we are going to do is we actually got the big shrink wrap shrink wrap bags uh, that you would use if you were say freezing or uh, gonna seal them whole and then freeze them so we're gonna put the big carcasses in there as well because she could put this in her water bath canner and make a big blow of broth with the whole carcass itself. So all of it is going to use, um, it'll just be for a later date. Now, once it has been brown, you pack it in your hot jars. Lightly brown. Lightly brown. So it's very little, they call it two thirds done, right? Yeah. Two thirds done. 
And so what Jen is now doing is packing it into our pint mason jars, leaving an inch headspace, and then she will be filling it up with water, right? Yep, boiling water. Boiling water that's been on the stove, sitting there, sterile. Well, not sterile, that's not the right word, is it? No, just clean boiling water. <laughs> All right, what have you done, babe? Okay, so we filled it up. Um, the ball book, I went back and looked because I wasn't sure if we should tightly pack or loosely pack. Ball book said, leave a generous one inch headspace. So I'm taking that as a loosely to medium pack. So I did, they're not too tight. Um, filled them up with boiling clean water for the one inch, generous one inch headspace. Wipe in the rims with vinegar, make sure there's no residue. And took the air bubbles out. Took the air bubbles out with our knife and now we're gonna put the lids on the lids are in hot water so they're clean i need my little magnet thing lost it okay with that little handy dandy thing my little magnet gets the lids out nice come on there okay so we've got our water and our pressure canner check your manual and see how much water to put in and we're going to put our turkey in at 10 pounds of pressure if you are a higher elevation use 15 pounds again just check your ball book check your area figure out what you need to do for you and then we're going to put them in there for 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts so 75 for us since we're doing pints this round and hopefully they all fit <laughs> okay so 10 pints are in i wish my pressure canner was one of those where you could stack them, but unfortunately it's not. Yep. So 10 are in and talk and through it. What I did just then, it's something that we do. This is a Presto pressure canner. Um, when you're going to turn, push down a little bit to get that seal tight. Uh, one time we just turned it and it didn't push down and it never sealed. And so it never gained pressure and we thought it was going to blow our roof off. <laughs> um, but that's what it ended up being. So just when you go down, just kind of press and turn. Uh, so now we're going to vent for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes is up. So you can just put your little weight on. Just make sure it's on there good. And now we're gonna build up 10 pounds of pressure and we'll see y'all in 75 minutes. Times like this, just an FYI, if you're thinking about doing, well, we did five turkeys. Yeah. Might be good to have two pressure canners. Yes. A maybe more cooking area. Bigger canning <laughs> setup. Cause we are definitely not gonna get all five birds no. done today. Um, and it's not because we can't get them cut up and ground up. We could do all that, but the 75 minute processing time takes a long time. We can do yeah. 10 pints. I think it's what, seven, six or seven quarts, mm -hmm. something like that uh, at a time. Uh, so it's going to take a while to get through. So I think our plan is to hopefully get two birds done today. And then tomorrow we'll do the other two and a half. Hopefully we'll get started a little bit earlier. Uh, while we're filming this, it's Easter Sunday. I'm not sure if I'll get it up today or not. We'll see. Um, but we got started a little bit later yeah. today doing Easter stuff at home. To yeah, start, if so. we had started at say eight o'clock this morning, it would have been fine, but we got a later start. Right. So here we are yeah. and we'll see you in a minute. <clears throat> we sitting here looking perfect. Got 30 minutes to go right at 10. Oh, I was going to talk to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you about the meat grinder because we said that we would let you know how, what we think of it. Love it. Love it. And that, I got the box out so you can see the brand A-I-C-O-K. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's stainless steel. Yeah, stainless steel. It works. It's got great power, um, and it works out really well. You got a few different attachments that the you can sausage use. Sausage filler adapter. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Everything's sweet. detachable, so you can clean it good. Yeah. It's really it's sweet, awesome. and it worked out really well. So it did turkey, and I have faith that it would grind up anything. It okay. took it like it was nothing. Yeah. And it's incredibly satisfying. Part. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to let you know it is went L, and it's very small and compact. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a little electric so you ain't gotta be sitting there hand cranking and grinding or anything like that so if you're interested in the meat grinder i don't think it was very expensive mm -mm, i think it was uh, like 60 dollars something like that no. it's not not like industrial 
two hundred three hundred dollar yeah. meat grinder. And it um, does the perfect job. So. It does. It'll be down in uh, our Amazon store below. So yeah. if you're interested, you can grab it from there. There you go. All right, thirty mm -hmm. minutes to go. Hey, there you are. Ah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so an hour and fifteen minutes is up. It is an hour and fifteen minutes, right, babe? Seventy-five minutes. Seventy-five minutes. Yeah, an hour and fifteen <laughs> minutes. So what we do is we turn the pressure canner off. And now we're just going to sit back and let the heat drop. Uh, you want it to get all the way to zero, uh, zero pressure. And then you still want to wait two minutes after that. Then you can take your weight off. Then you can unseal the top and get the finished product out. And while we wait on that time, Ray Ray over eating some fish sticks. That good stuff, girl? Mm-hmm. You better not be getting your pretty Easter dress with ketchup on it. <laughs> Even if you're quarantined at home, you still got to wear your Easter dress, right? <laughs> so Jen has been cooking up a bunch more ground turkey. We got a bunch right there we got a bunch in the sink with ice around it and then we got a bunch over there still cooking she has been a busy woman very i feel like you've seen more of me but she's the actual worker i'm just the one walking around with the yeah. camera in my hand so it's not too bad we've done three three turkeys mm -hmm. so we have two left and that will probably be tomorrow yeah because i mean the whole getting it ready is quick yeah but i mean we're only on we just finished round one right and we probably, out of these, got two or three more rounds to yeah. do just with the three turkeys so that we got done. The canner, I mean, even if we wanted to keep going, there would not be enough hours in the day to keep <laughs> yeah. going because the canner <laughs> takes 75 minutes. Right. And so when we say 75 minutes, that's 75 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. Yeah. So you got to vent for 10, you got to gain up to mm -hmm. 10, and you got to let it go down from 10 to zero. So you're really looking at more like two total hours yeah. per canner setup. Yeah. All right. It's almost time. Okay, we've hit zero, and so uh, we would have waited about a minute. We took the weight off. We're just going to give it a, just a second longer until you hear absolutely no air really coming out of there. Tis time. Tis time. Nobody looks cracked. Yay. It's always a fear. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh my so gosh. Pretty. So pretty. So beautiful. Good. Okay, the first batch is done, and now we've got a bunch more to do. Okay, so we didn't get all five turkeys done, um, and that's okay. We're gonna extend the next two till tomorrow, but it was able to give us pretty good numbers yeah. to share with you on, is this worth it? So with five total birds, we had three toms, two females that were processed. Remember we pardoned old blood feather out there. <laughs> um, and to talk about that a little bit, um, she's gonna be okay they are made for meat. However, if you ration the food, they won't overly get right. big too And quick. she's the smallest. So she was the smallest. Um, she hasn't exceeded weight for her bones or her heart. Um, I think she's she's pretty healthy. Um, yeah. She's pretty energetic. So yeah, rationing her food from now on, and we'll see how long we can let her live with us. So blood feather stays. Um, but we wanted to get into some of the hard detailed numbers on was this whole process worth it. So we got our turkeys November November 1st. White broad breasted from Hoover's Hatchery. Um, they were about six-ish dollars. I think, so. I think they're about six dollars a bird. Um, we got 10 birds. Four we lost way back, way yeah. back at the beginning. Um, and these six were healthy, beautiful birds. They lived with chickens their whole life. Um, so we know a lot of people say that they have issues with uh, what's called blackhead, blackhead, blackhead on turkeys. That issue. Yeah, and that's a disease that turkeys get with living with chickens. Yeah. Uh, apparently the cross, but we never had that issue. I don't know if maybe it has something to do with more of confined spaces. I think it's more of like a wild turkey thing, but I'm not for sure. I know a lot of people. Well, I mean, yeah. a lot of people get them when they raise them. Yeah, domesticated. I don't know. We don't have any experience with that. Our turkeys never had it, so I don't know if it's just part of our the breed that we had or what. But that's a bonus. Um, we did some math trying to narrow down specifically how much these six turkeys cost us uh, to feed. So we have a bunch of poultry and we don't say this is specifically yours and we know how much that costs. Um, but we averaged it down um, to about a bag to two bags of feed per month uh, for the six turkeys. They weren't overly crazy, um, but they did like to eat because they, as they got bigger, they started yeah. eating more. So we averaged up the cost of the birds and the cost of feed was about a hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, total because we did a GMO feed, yeah, organic, not, mm -hmm. good feed, exactly. And so we did that for five months, so mm -hmm. from November to now April, 
Um, we went a little late into April, just weather and different stuff that was going on. Um, so $100 for all six birds, and we are going to get 100 pounds of meat. Yeah. So. Yeah, which is about 100 meals. Yeah. If we eat a pound of turkey per week, per meal, I mean, that's, I don't even know that math, but it's 100 meals. Right, exactly, because we, we weighed them out. Um, we've got about a pound in each pint. Um, and we're going to get about a hundred pints uh, once we kind of did our averaging over the three birds we did and knowing pretty much what we're going to get yeah. out of the next two. And that's just ground meat. That is not mm -hmm. counting the necks, which we're going to make broth of. We're right. going to make broth from the carcasses. We're freezing those to do that. Um, all the rest of the bones, like the legs, the, um, the wings that we got the meat off of, we're freezing those to make broth later. The feet. The feet, I cannot even imagine how much broth it's going to make. It's yeah. going to be a lot of broth and it's going to be a continuous process. There's no way we could do that all at one time. Um, yeah, and then a lot of the organs, uh, the dogs got. Yeah. Uh, that It's very healthy for them to have uh, the raw organs. So they yeah. got to eat some hearts and livers and all that good stuff. There was more waste with the turkeys than yeah. with meat chickens. There's a whole lot more fat on them. There's a whole lot, you know, intestines are bigger. Um, stuff like the gizzards that we don't do anything with is bigger. Um, trying to think what else. There's just a whole lot more organs that are bigger sized yeah. and um, the dogs got the good parts and the rest was waste. Um, we hated that. Well, but, it's compost. We're gonna compost yeah. that. So, I mean, yeah, it still serves a purpose, but much more waste than with meat chickens, but you get yeah, more yeah. meat too. So. You do get a whole lot more meat. So hard numbers, $1 a pound for the meat that came out. That's how yeah. much we're narrowing it down to. It costs us a dollar per pound which is a hundred dollars. Yeah. So most of the time we say, we don't do this because we're trying to make it cheaper. We're doing this because we want to be healthier, cleaner meat. Right. Um, usually it costs more, but I would almost say that it feels like it was cheaper. I think so, with turkeys. Um, with meat chickens, it's not. It's not cheaper with them. Yeah, they um, eat you, so much. You spend more and you get less from your process than you do with turkeys. That, that's actually a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm sorry, I'm trying. We're trying to keep this short. Yeah. But chickens, they're a whole. Well, you can do them differently, but most time you have a whole chicken. That's one meal for your family. So we did 15 chickens. That's 15 meals. Yeah. We did five turkeys. That's 100 meals. Right. Because we ground it up and doing it this way. Um, and I, I don't know if I would ever do that with chicken, just because they're yeah. so small. It feels like you would waste too much. Anyways, ultimate question: Will we do it again? And was it worth it? Um, definitely worth it. Worth all the hard work. Worth the whole process. For myself, it was more difficult because they were here for five months and they became a bigger part of our homestead yeah. and it was a whole lot more emotional um, and physically for my brother and Zach. Um, emotionally, it was harder for me and I think it was difficult for you too just because mm -hmm. they were a, pro a part of our homestead. Yep. So we miss them. Um, it's not the same without them. With you know the kids, they played with them. They did awesome though. Um, they had no issues whatsoever. They, Zero they aggression were, ever yeah. from these turkeys too. Yeah. So I don't know that we'll do it again. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> so the one thing about processing, unless we did it once a year. Yeah, once a year, just yeah. tough it through. The I, two things for me on if we'll do it again. Uh, one, like she said, the emotional part. However. That hits me no matter what we butcher right. um, that day, and I don't. I don't think I want that to get easier. Um, yeah. Like I want to be reminded. We want to be responsible. Exactly, and I want to be reminded how impactful and emotional that part is, right. and I want it to always stay that way. But the chickens were a lot easier. I could do the emotional part, and then we could just process them. Right. Uh, the turkeys, if we ever do it again, we are going to have to have a super duper turkey set up yeah. because those toms were just way too big. They wouldn't Huge. fit in the cones. Uh, it was just. They're really heavy, they're really big, and it's it, like the plucker barely could even move because they were so big yeah. in there. Um, so I don't know. I'm not gonna say we won't. Yeah. Uh, maybe once a year has passed and it hits about November again, right. we might do it again, but because this is quite the reward. Yeah, it is. Uh, we'll see. We'll see going forward. We'll see. And we definitely don't <laughs> want to have to eat all this. <laughs> right. We don't want to deter anyone from ever doing that. Um, it, but it is a process. Uh, yeah. And just make sure that you have help. If Jed yes. wasn't here, there's no way her and I could no have done that possible. by ourselves. They were too heavy. Way too heavy. I couldn't even pick one up to save my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> my shoulders and like arms are sore. Like I worked out an incredible yeah. amount today. Uh, but I think that's it. That's why we leave you all. I hope you all learned something. Pretty cool seeing it from a live turkey to now canned yeah. uh, and going into our pantry. It's extremely satisfying. 
Um, if you eat meat, please uh, know that this is a great way to start looking into. Um, there's not cleaner food that you can right. eat and than what we're And it have. also holds you responsible for eating your meat. Yeah. I mean, if you don't eat meat, then you know don't ever worry about that. Just eat your vegetables. But if you do eat meat, um, raising your own is a great way to have your family be held responsible for the meat that you do consume mm -hmm. and not just pass a blind eye over the meat that you buy in the store and never see where it comes from or how it's processed or raised. Exactly. And in our opinion, this is how we defeat the crooked food system yes. and how the terrible meat processing plants. This is us doing our part because we are meat eaters. It's tough. It's very tough, but yeah. it's better than just buying it. meat at the store and not knowing anything about it. Exactly. So <laughs> now if you're vegetarian, that's all different thing. But. Yeah. You're doing your part doing it that way. Yeah. We are not. This is how we do our part. Um, and I hope everyone sees that, uh, how we raise our animals with respect yeah. and they get to live an incredibly great life and don't have to die in some Tyson manufacturer yeah. place somewhere. They get to live and be fed by the family that fed them. Yep. All right, y'all. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.